Greetings to all of our YouTube subscribers and friends. Welcome to episode number 97 of If This Car Could Talk. We're so glad you joined us today and this week's feature car is a rare one indeed. You probably remember that since July 4th, we've been featuring all of the outstanding red, white, and blue AMC muscle cars from the Dan Curtis collection. If you missed the last three episodes, you really need to go back and see them. Dan's cars are all top-notch restorations and highlight AMC's supercars of the muscle car era. Today, Dan will explain the story of the not often seen Rebel machine. In 1970, these cars competed with the big three for younger buyers' dollars on the showroom floors of dealerships across the land. So sit back and enjoy today's feature and be sure to give the video the thumbs up and share it with everyone you know. Please feel free to leave a comment about this car or anything else that's on your mind. We always appreciate your comments and read every one of them. Without any further delay, here's Dan to give you the scoop on this intermediate muscle car from American Motors. Now, let's go for a ride. Hi, I'm Dan Curtis and we're here today to talk about one of my red, white, and blue cars, the Rebel Machine. The Rebel Machine uh, was made in 1970 and it was designed to increase uh, foot traffic in the dealership showroom. And as you'll see in this video, it's a fantastic car. It runs and drives like a dream, and uh, it's probably my favorite car out of all my red, white, and blues, which you can see in other videos or in the combined four-car video. Uh, it's my favorite car to drive because it's just such a great running and driving car. I had both the A and B scheme scramblers, and I had the uh, opportunity to pick up one of the Hearst Superstock AMXs. There were 52 of those made, and I actually have number 52, which is being restored at my shop right now. But um, now that I had three of them, I thought there was an, a possibility that I could get all five of the red, white, and blue American Motors cars. And this Rebel machine popped up on eBay. And I was looking at the, um, I was looking at the video, uh, the pictures on eBay of this Rebel machine, and I noticed that the background pictures were of a very green grass and very leafy trees, yet the advertisement for the car on eBay was from Las Vegas. And so that, uh, being a person that's in the restoration business, that aroused my suspicions immediately. So I managed to get the phone number of the person selling it, and we started chatting. And he ended up um, telling me that he, was, he had used the photos from a prior auction that he bought the car on. And I told him, you're never going to sell this thing with incorrect photos. People will think it's a scam. And so I ended up making him an offer at the end of the conversation, which he declined. And then uh, a day and a half later, he called me back and asked me if the offer was still good. And I ended up getting the Rebel Machine. They made 1,936 of those, of which less than 1,000 were made in the red, white, and blue. And as you can tell from the uh, some of the video pictures, uh, you'll see the, uh, the code on the door tag is 25A, and that signifies a real original uh, Rebel machine in the red, white, and blue. They did offer those cars in um, solid colors after they did, I don't forget what the number was, the first 900 or whatever it was, uh, cars in red, white, and blue. And then the solid colors could be had in um, red, uh, bittersweet orange, uh, a bright green color. There was a variety of different colors you could get them in. And I think the rarest of them all is, I believe there's only one or two that were ever made with black on the interior and black on the exterior. And so those are the rarest of them all. So this one, um, the Rebel machine's an interesting uh, concept by American Motors. They took the Rambler Rebel, which was redesigned in 1970, and then became the actually the Matador uh, in 1971. And so um, when they redesigned that car, they decided to do another red, white, and blue car uh, for 1970 and uh, to follow in the footsteps of the, um, of the Rambler Scramblers. And that car has the most powerful engine that American Motors ever made from the factory with 340 horsepower. And as you can see in one of the photos in the video, there is a Y on the engine tag code, and that Y signifies that that was that 340 horsepower engine. The way they achieved the 340 horsepower was that they uh, used the next generation camshaft, which was to be coming out in the 401 in 1971. They used a bigger exhaust valve uh, from 1.625 to 1.68, and they used a larger exhaust manifold outlet at 2.25 inch instead of 2 inch. 
And the result of those, those combined parts, uh, the intake manifold was also unique to it. Uh, the combined parts of the intake manifold, the uh, larger exhaust valves, the upgraded camshaft, and the larger uh, exhaust ports on the exhaust manifold resulted in that extra 15 horsepower. In 1970, your AMX or Javelin with the Ram Air was um, 325 horsepower, the Rebel machine was 340, uh, 340 horsepower. What I like about that car, and in fact it's probably my favorite driving car, is that it has coil springs all around, so it's a very different sensation than a car with rear leaf springs. And so it drives like and feels like a bigger car. Uh, its ride is very smooth and fairly pliant, and it's a very, um, very pleasant car to drive, whether you're driving at 30 miles an hour around town or up on the freeway at 65 miles an hour. Out of all the cars I have, that would probably be the car I'd most want to take on a long trip because it is a, a wonderful riding car. Now the other aspect of it, and the same with the Scramblers, um, which I really like in these old cars, is it has vent windows. And you can see in one of the pictures that the vent window is turned in so that on a hot Arizona day, when it's really toasty out, rather than rely on the hot air coming in through the floor vents, which comes basically past the engine, um, you can take those vent windows and crank them around and have them blowing right at your midsection. And so that's a, that's a, a thing that's missing now in modern cars that you just don't get, and it's a really enjoyable thing to have. And you ask yourself, why did they eliminate them? Well, because they cost extra money. And manufacturing a car is all about profit margin. Otherwise, they would go out of business, and so they eliminate some parts like that, which is a, that's kind of a cool thing about these old cars. The other cool thing about this Rebel machine, which you can see in one of the photos as well, is the hood tack. So all the other American Motors cars had the tachometer in the gauge package, and in order to look at how fast your engine was turning on the tachometer, you had to take your eyes off the road. However, uh, the Rebel machine has that integrated hood tack, which I think is basically the same as some of the ones they had on Firebirds. Um, and that hood tack, uh, you can see how fast the engine's going while you're just driving down the road without having to look away. The Rebel machine um, could be had in an automatic or a manual transmission. Uh, that was the uh, first red, white, and blue car that American Motors had made that you could get with an automatic transmission. In 1970, American Motors was still using uh, a Borg Warner automatic transmission, which is basically the same as the FMX that Ford used forever. And in fact, they used it all the way through 1979 79 on their, their trucks. And so it was a Borg Warner M12, which was their heaviest duty transmission. And it had, on the there's a component called the drive shaft yoke in the drivetrain, and that's the piece that plugs into the back of the transmission that turns the drive shaft. And the teeth on that M12 are enormous. There's 16 huge cogs in the uh, drive shaft yoke, and that thing, um, you'd, have to, you'd have to put a piece of dynamite inside there to blow those, those gears up and the teeth in that. And so American Motors used that transmission, and at the time, it's a very heavy-duty transmission, and you could get performance parts to, like a shift kit and stuff for it, but today, those performance parts are gone, and in fact, um, trying to get parts for that, like the, the kick-down solenoid, is almost impossible now to find those. So we have a place in Georgia that we send the transmission bands to when we rebuild the transmission for the cars we restore, and that's the only way we can get new transmission bands, to send them out and have them relined. In 1971 and on, uh, 72 I should say, they modified the back of the crankshaft so that they could use a Chrysler transmission. So if you have a 72 automatic of any American Motors uh, manufacturing uh, model, you would end up with a uh, Chrysler transmission, either a 904 or a 727. And that's, you know, that helped to prolong the life of uh, some of the old American Motors cars. When they blew up the transmissions, they could actually get the parts for a 727 transmission or a 904. The rear end of the Rebel machine is a, um, a corporate 20, uh, which is uh, made by Dana. Or a lot of companies use their uh, specific brand uh, rear axle housings and rear ends. And that is a 3.54 ratio. Now, a lot of the machines uh, were ordered with an optional 3.91 rear ratio axle and that is um, that is very good for acceleration particularly in automatic however the uh, highway speeds are not as enjoyable 70 miles an hour is like 4,000 rpm so that's not a very enjoyable thing
Well, that concludes our look at all of the red, white, and blue American Motors muscle cars from the Dan Curtis Collection. They're all fabulous examples of how well a smaller car company can compete with the big dogs if they have product offerings that are all top-notch in every regard, which American Motors cars certainly were, particularly the performance models. Be sure to give this video the thumbs up and share it with your friends. This next Sunday, we've got a real blast from the past for those of you who remember the Chevrolet Vega and how easily they'll take a small block V8 swap. This 1972 Camback wagon is so cool, we know you'll love it. Until then, remember, please be careful out there.